What's going on, everybody? Welcome to part five of our sentiment analysis live graphing app in Dash and Python series. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is try to make this a little more of a user friendly UI. Uh, one, it's very ugly, but also we just can't interact with it really. It's a live graph, but there's really absolutely no interaction unless someone wants to come into the code and manually modify that there, uh, which is unacceptable. So the first thing we want to do is like we had with the stock app, we just want to have like an input field somewhere. Um, and we can really put this anywhere. For now, I'm just going to slap it in the top. Um, I, I'm really not going to worry about layout until maybe the very, very end. So until that point, this is probably going to be a relatively ugly app. Uh, we want to get the functionality right, and then we can kind of try to make it look a little more appealing. Um, so bear with me. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so so to do input, uh, basically all we want to do uh, is first of all we need to import input, uh, and then we can add an input pretty much anywhere. But but these are el you know these elements are going to occur in the order that we do them. And don't forget, again later on we can put them in divs and use rows and grids and stuff and make it pretty. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to slap it right above the graph and hopefully in line. So we're, this will be a DCC dashboard component input uh, and then we're going to say uh, the ID the ID here will be the sentiment term and then we'll just say the value uh, equals I'm trying to think of like a non I don't know we, we could go with let's just go with Google maybe or something or Twitter Twitter is probably the most fitting we'll go with Twitter uh, so value will be Twitter and then type will be text and then let's not forget a comma here and not hit an error because I'm hoping to just update this <laughs> without having to close anything. One viewer suggested to me that if you want to kill the server, introduce a syntax error. So you could you could do like a print this, Ooh, not, not in Sublime, no sir, and then try to run it and hit that syntax error and then you wouldn't have to kill the server. That was the suggestion. Thus far, I think that has actually worked <laughs> if you want to like end the server without having to go to task manager on Windows. Um, other people have suggested use Linux or probably Mac would, would work maybe better. Um, not better than Linux, but better than Windows. But again, um, I mostly use Windows to record tutorials. Uh, it's the best platform for recording on, besides maybe Mac. Uh, I just, I like Windows better. Uh, anyway, enough on that. Uh, what were we doing? Adding an input. <laughs> so there's our input. Now what we need to do is take in that input through our callback. So we've got the output that goes to the live graph. Now we also want to add input. Yes, I pound my keyboard. Uh, what we're going to do, this comes in as a list and it's going to be capital input. And again, just like before, don't confuse that. Uh, this is, you know, there's, there's, really kind of two inputs. There's dash dependencies input and then there's the actual dash core component input that is like the element, the which also sounds weird or feels weird because it's really an HTML element. And anyway, that kind of gets confusing. Uh, I don't know how to do it better. Uh, I still am in love with dash, but the naming gets confusing sometimes, at least to me. I'm sure everybody else is not confused. So, so anyway, the input, the comp component ID, like I said, too many tutorials. This will be the last one for today, I think. Uh, equals sentiment term. Thank you, autocomplete. Uh, and then uh, with the input, basically we wanna, uh, you know, we, get, we got the ID as sentiment term, but then what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for whatever was, what's, whatever's in the value of that. So we're gonna say the component underscore property is the value so whatever happens to be in there and that's the input that we're after and again just like before don't forget your comma although it should break smoothly if we made that kind of an error uh, once we've got that the component id becomes the thing that or the value that is the thing that we're going to pass and we're just going to pass that as sentiment term through to our function and now we can use sentiment term inside our query now, this becomes a problem <laughs> because in, oh, I guess it's just updating. I don't know why it's going crazy there. Why is it, why is it poking this out at us?
Why is that bleeding over? It appears that like that's bleeding over from the uh, from the Twitter stream. I am still streaming uh, the tweets. That's interesting. Am I right to believe that that's pouring over <laughs> into this one? I don't know how I don't know how this console works in Sublime, so I don't. Know. I'm gonna have to look and see if it ever actually pops up. Anyway, interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> the problem is we're trying to read SQL, and the first parameter has to be that query. So the real temptation here would be to do a dot format, right? When you look for that like command, but the biggest rule of any sort of development, especially web dev, is don't trust your users. Even if 99,000 or 99.99999% of your users are good, well-mannered people. It only takes one person to drop your entire table. It's bleeding over. Why is it doing that? That's interesting. <laughs> it doesn't seem right. <laughs> Why is it bleeding over? Are we ever print? Do I print it here? Like, I don't see any print or df.head or anything. Why is it popping out over here? It's got to be obvious, and I'm just missing it. Um, anyway, uh, it only takes one person to drop your entire table, so we can't do that. Now, luckily, Pandas does come with a way to parameterize the, the input, but it can get kind of annoying. Here is the way to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to copy and paste it over. Uh, paste. So through a bunch of tinkering and I found the docs for pandas and then I had some help from a friend. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, we figured it out and um, basically we're going to use this. You can use, I think it's like PEP249 or something. You can use any of the, the options there. Uh, we're just going to use this one. But basically what I was trying to do is do like this and then the parameter was just sentiment term. Instead, what you actually you have to do is just like question mark and then build it this way. Weird in my opinion, but that's how it's got to be done. Um, and that's how you can watch out for uh, SQL injection. Okay, so now, based on whatever sentiment term is, when it comes in through that input, why is this happening? <laughs> it's driving me nuts. <laughs> anyway, uh, based on whatever that input is, uh, we, can, we can make our graph. So let me go ahead and let's save this. And I don't think it's going to update without a refresh is it running list index out of range why are you out of range is it because the default word why would it be out of range <laughs> dang it it's going to kill my server too is it actually dead no that was temporary okay okay so the term right now is twitter now what's cool about this is we can do all kinds of things. Like for example, uh, each time we delete something, it's gonna refresh. So this is anything with, you know, TW. I can think of a few words that start with TW. So alternatively, like this is nothing. So this is actually just a raw, the entire Twitter, just everything. And as you can see, it's in those little chunks coming through. We can talk about how to smooth that here in a second. Um, but anyway, another term would be like guns. So G U uh, N, for example. Um, and now we've got gun sentiment, which is fluctuating around zero. Looks like a lot of things are fluctuating around zero. How about how's Trump doing today? <gasps> Trump is pot. Wait. Okay, it's just it's catching up. Okay, but he's still positive. Um, okay. So, so that's a perfect example of like how long did that take? Like typing Trump, it's like, oh, it's got to go through every single one. I wish that wasn't required. One option could be to fill in the text form and the input comes on the search button click or something. Um, but another option is, um, like I said, another user pointed out to me how long an animate equals true takes and how costly that is. So what if we change that to false and let's go back uh, here, so the animate's still happening, so I'm just going to refresh. And I think hopefully at this point the animate, yeah, okay, so clearly the animate isn't happening. Now let's do G U N S. I mean, it's as quick as we type it in. So, um, interesting how gun versus guns. -a. Is it a, di it's a different time range? Is this just a subsection? So, like, I'm pointing to my screen, you guys can't see that. Huh. Anyway, guns. -a. 
Like, I think maybe gun is a, or guns a should be a subsection of gun, but I, I'm not seeing the matching pattern. Anyway, so now what we're going to do is, uh, one issue is these timestamps. They're a pain in the boot to read. So, um, so one thing we can do is just is fix that right away. So we can come down here, uh, and rather than plotting df.unix.values, we can just convert this so that we can create a date column instead. So we can say <coughs> df date, and that's equal to pd.2 underscore date time. And then we're going to pass the column, which will be df unix. And if it was a true unix timestamp, we would say unit equals seconds, but it's not. It's in milliseconds. So we say unit milliseconds. And then what we're going to say is df.set underscore index. And we're going to set that index to date, not capital D, lowercase d. And then let's do it uh, in place equals true. Cool. Uh, now, let's just do, I think we can just say df.index.values here. I'm trying to think if that's going to fly or not find out soon. No, let's try df.index because it might not like the list form. Right, df.index is what it wants. So converting it to a list probably made it like string is my guess uh, and it really wants date time values. So anyways, now it's a date. Cool. So um, so what are some other things that we could we could do? So once we have a date time index, a proper date time index, we can also do like resampling. So again, going back to like, let's just say raw Twitter sentiment, this is kind of ugly. And like, so anything where we would want maybe more history um, or where you've got something with high volume, you'd probably want to grab more data, but you don't want to plot 10,000 rows of data. Instead, you want to plot, I don't know, a thousand or, or something like that. So one way we can smooth things out is uh, we can, once once we've done the set index, we can go and we can do a df equals df dot resample. Uh, and then we can resample to let's say one second. And then again, you can do how equals sum or mean, we'll do a mean, uh, so an average. And now it's much cleaner so this is the tr this is that raw sentiment that we were just watching before it was basically impossible to look at. Now, okay, it's understandable and we can actually see the updates happening, <laughs> right? So so that's super helpful. Um, okay, uh, the only other thing I'd probably like to add is maybe to our layout. So in our layout, another thing that we can add here is a title. So we could say title equals, and then let's just say term uh, dot format, and then we'll just do sentiment term. So now we can actually see what the term is, although it's empty in this case, but we could type Trump. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, there's not enough data on Trump, I don't think. So going to the one second won't even connect Trump. What about uh, USA? No, nope, USA is the same thing. Us is good enough, but USA, no. <laughs> So we would need more data. So so rather than let's say let's say for for less common words, rather than resampling to one second, we could say three hundred milliseconds, or should it be more? We're gonna see in a second. I'm trying to think logically about that. Yeah. So it should actually be a higher number. So maybe I don't know, thirty seconds. <laughs> and then let's try uh, USA. Right. Okay. So then it's finally connected. Okay. So, uh, but depending on what kind of search volume you're going to look at, you're probably going to want to vary these values and stuff like that. So you'd probably want to stick with maybe milliseconds and then how many milliseconds. So for example, rather than 30 seconds, you could say, uh, you know, 300, let's do 3000 milliseconds would be three seconds or 30,000. So just pick one metric that you wanted to stick with. And then you could make that metric some, some, some ratio basically of however many data points you did come up with in that return. Cause you'd want it to be dynamic depending on which term or word you're dealing with, right? Because as you can see, if we're going to use 
30 seconds. Well, in 30 seconds, we really get enough tweets to fill an entire 30 second mark, you know, or at least very close to fill up that entire 1000 values. So you wouldn't want to use that with something as high volume as everything. So, so anyways, you'd probably want to make that somewhat dynamic. Uh, anyway, moving forward, um, I'm trying to decide what I really want to add next, but one thing I think I want to do is while it's cool to get live sentiment for a specific term, uh, one thing I think would be kind of cool is to get, uh, let's do a thousand milliseconds here. There we go. One thing I think would be cool is to also get the history. So like you get live sentiment up here, but, but our Twitter database, it's going to keep growing and it'd be cool to get a much larger history. So to, to doing the live, you really want to make a pretty small query so it can run pretty quickly, but then you might be interested to know, um, you know, over time with, with Google or, or let's say, yeah, you're an investor and you're interested in Google, for example, which doesn't have too many updates. Um, where is, let's try, let's see if we can resample to, let's do a hundred milliseconds. Or we just don't have enough Google data. Anyway, um, but let's say you were gonna do something like Google or let's say USA. Um, so we could type USA into here and obviously we, we don't have it connected yet. So probably maybe, maybe I'll add that, the dynamic uh, resample based on how much data we have. So that'll be one thing, but also have like a historical down here. And then the other thing I'm interested in doing, especially now that we're using text blob is we can, um, we can use, we can run this data through and start to find out related terms. So like with USA or with something like Trump, Right, we can get the related keywords to Trump. Um, I keep forgetting if you would have to go down or up. <laughs> so 10 seconds, you'd want to resample for Trump. There we go. Still missing a connection. But anyways, um, you know, we have Trump and we have positive sentiment, but one thing we can do is we could say, okay, what are the related terms? So we could look for the nouns, the, especially like proper nouns related to Trump right? And then we could determine the sentiment for those proper nouns, right? And then we could figure out like, okay, what's, what's Trump doing good? What do we like about Trump? What's Trump doing bad? What do we dislike about Trump, right? Or is Trump doing anything good or anything bad or whatever? Like you can find all those things and it does, obviously it doesn't have to be Trump. It could be any search term that you type into there. Um, so something like that, I think would be kind of cool to pull a much larger scaled uh, amount of sentiment and update that as well. And I'm also curious to see if, you know, how well you can update different parts of Dash. I haven't even tried to do something like that. So I'm curious to see how that'll go. So anyways, um, that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you've got questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, you can feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in another tutorial.